Hey guys, welcome back to another Pokemon Masters episode. So, this time around, uh, I'm no longer going to do episodic um, readouts of the story. I'm sure you guys have played past uh, levels that I have actually gone through in the last seven episodes of Pokemon Masters. Uh, basically, I just wanted to go through the basic stuff that you had to do to unlock um, the main events. Now, of course, uh, if you guys have played further than I am, which you probably might have, you will have probably unlocked co-op mode, um, which is after you've cleared the story until uh, the beginning of the Pokemon Masters League. So that is basically the entire five badges of Pokemon Masters. Uh, then yeah, so you unlock co-op mode and of course uh, you can take part in co-op events. Uh, initially when I've unlocked the events after chapter five, uh, I couldn't really complete the missions. As you can tell from the events, I've finally cleared certain amount of missions, but there are some missions that I'm still unable to clear because I think like the difficulty of the events aren't fully unlocked yet. So um, this video is going to talk about what you're going to do or require the minimum effort to do for Pokemon Masters when it comes to events and of course um, taking note of the uh, daily missions and of course maybe like the exchange stuff within uh, the events itself. So let's talk about um, the events that's gonna end probably soon which is the rock type one. If you guys have not been playing it you probably should be because well the events for the rock type event or rather the type the type events where we have grass and rock right now. Um, grass of course just started yesterday as of this time I'm recording which is the 18th of September um, Rock type is going to end pretty soon which is another six days time uh, you still have enough time to actually clear out the necessary requirements or the minimum requirements you should be playing the the type events uh, it's kind of difficult to I was, uh, rearrange these kinds of events like we have the trainer events and of course you have the type events so let's let's put it as that trainer and type event so far that we've only seen dana launching out in pokemon masters at this point of time so yeah as you can tell the single player section of the events you will have the normal difficulty and the hard difficulty and of course for co-op you have hard and very hard but personally to me um once you've cleared the single player missions once that's it you don't have to play them ever again uh, although they kind of boost XP up, but personally, I think the XP in the co-op modes <laughs> are way more uh, beneficial. Because, uh, well, the difficulty-wise that the single players come with, uh, they don't really give a lot of XP to begin with. So that boost in, e in EXP up is kind of pointless. And of course, the rewards under the co-op is actually better. Uh, apparently, I have not cleared this. That's probably one of the reasons why um, one of my missions have not been cleared yet. So, mainly because, well, my team of Pokemon under the rock um, type aren't exactly high level enough to probably handle very hard. Um, but you have to consider as well um, that other people are playing with you since it is co-op mode so um, I noticed there is this minimum level standard uh, let's say for example let me choose my team with no not this one that's for Gary's event so like this one um, this is my pure rock team of course you will get the Sigma Brock version once you have reached Pokemon Masters League um, which is the necessary requirement to unlock co-op mode. Um, so yeah, then you start leveling up your trainers and of course once you hit the strength requirement needed um, for the particular difficulty, you are capable of taking part in it as well. Then at the same time, your team members will of course meet the requirement and of course you guys will help each other out to battle um, 
the bosses of that particular difficulty itself. So, um, I've actually cleared all the exchange requirements, the minimum requirements for rock type training event. Uh, let's go over to the exchange menu so I can explain to you guys what you actually need to do uh, at a, of a minimum standard for these type of events. Alright, so let's head over here, go to exchange items. Then of course, you can see that grass type training event. Then of course, you can switch on to the rock type. Then you've got Gary or most of you guys probably know him as Blue. Um, considering that Pokemon Masters uses their um, in-game names. Alright, so let's talk about the rock type event first. As you can see, I have two items missing, um, which are the two minimum items you need to exchange for. The rest of the items are not exactly that important. So if you guys have access, you know, the... I think those are vouchers? Yeah. Uh, if you have access vouchers, then you can go ahead and exchange them. So how do you actually read the information here? That's pretty important. So 12 days left of the event, you can see that duration time period left on the event as well when you're playing it in the explore mode. Then of course, this this part here, this is the most important. So it shows you how many you can exchange for. So there's, you have exchanged zero out of two. So there's two in total you can change for. Then followed by the more common items. Therefore, you, you can switch out for them as well. And yeah, so the main two items that you minimally need to exchange for, you can see in the grass one because I have yet to do the grass event at all, um, which is this, which is the gym leader notes, which you need to actually have to, um, if I'm not wrong, power up your trainer's Pokemon. And of course, this one is the replay ticket. Let's say, for example, um, if you guys don't know how to use the replay ticket, this is basically what it is used. Let's say, for example, I'm going into the training area. There are some of the events that I've already cleared. Like, let's say for this one, I have zero remaining battles. So, uh, I apologize for the message tones that's occurring on my computer. But yeah. Okay, so, for example, if you tap on it because you, you can't really play anymore because there's zero remaining tries. But somehow or rather, the go button is still lighted up. So, if you tap on it, it will ask you, do you want to use your replay ticket? So, if you if you click yes, uh, you will get to, you know, take part uh, in this adventure again. Uh, and of course, they will give you a warning sign. If you use the item, it will not be replaced, that kind of thing. So, yeah. So, I'm just going to show you an example by using one of my replay tickets. Um, I don't mind using it on this mission because... Uh, currently, I can't clear very hard with my Pokemon levels, or rather my trainer levels at 60, which is my best team. Uh, you can see here, this is actually my best team so far. Uh, <laughs> uh, in terms of offense and support plus multi-target, like uh, Barry's Primplug, or if you guys have already evolved it to Empoleon, um, because of the skill bubble, you can hit all the enemies at one go, plus it only uses one energy. So I will talk about team setup um, in another video in the future, so look forward to that. Uh, if you guys are still interested in playing Pokemon Masters. So yeah, so this is my best setup so far. I mean, I could be using a better trainer instead of Olivia, because Olivia actually has the best uh, damage output at this point on time. Although uh, Lycan Rock isn't exactly a very useful Pokemon because of its low defense. So all that in another video anyway guys. So <laughs> uh, I can't handle very hard even with a team of uh, level 60 trainers and their Pokemon. That's, that's kind of a hint of the level requirements you need. And um, for normal, you can actually start off with any low-level trainers uh, with their Pokemon. Then, of course, hard. The minimum requirement, I would say, is you need a team of level 42 to be safe. Uh, trainers to actually t um, win um, the hard mode difficulty. So, alright, back to the replay ticket. I'm gonna show you guys what it is because I don't mind using on this event because it gives out the 
pearls that you can actually exchange for for money, which is pretty important. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys what does it do. So I had zero remaining plays. So after using the replay ticket, let's see how many actually refreshes for the event itself. All right, so. There we go. We go straight into the battle. That's pretty interesting. So they don't really show you how much they actually um, replace. So I'm going to show you guys an example. Alright, so before the energy bar refills, let's use that attack. Then of course, let's keep doing this. You just need to constantly be uh, doing actions. If not, you're going to waste your energy charge time. So let's do a Giga Drain so we can use support stats, you know, to um, kind of delay the energy duration at the same time. Alright, so there we go. Oh, that was not too bad on the damage, but still not the best. There we go. You can see Lycan Rock actually doing a lot more damage. So if you guys actually manage to get um, Lycan Rock uh, from the scouts that's pretty fantastic so um, the main reason why I have Lycan Rock and Primplug is because they have attacks that is one energy cost which is the best thing to have when it comes to uh, activating your finishing moves so because they need to use certain amount of skills to actually be ready for use so that's why it's always important to have you know um, a Pokemon that has one energy cost instead of a whole team of two energy cost attack moves, it's gonna um, kind of hinder your flow of attack patterns. So yeah, so that's just a brief description of how you should set up your team. So apparently replay tickets, like um, you know, what we just seen, they don't actually recover all three replays. Uh, or all three uh, capabilities of play whenever the day refreshes. Uh, unlike Uta Macross, if you guys have played Uta Macross um, like I am, um, because you've been following my channel for Uta Macross before Pokemon Masters, you'll probably know that Dana is also using the same system on Uta Macross. Um, where basically, it's a, I would say, a ticket or you know, same same ticket system. But in Uta Macross, it refreshes the full uh, play capabilities of that particular event. Uh, let's say, for example, the daily event there uh, lets you play three times a day. The item actually refreshes all three times. So in Pokemon Masters, sadly to say, they're not as generous. One replay ticket basically lets you play once. <laughs> so that's kind of a bummer. Alright, so since we are here, uh, or rather, let's go back to the main topic about the events. So, let's say, for example, yeah, you the minimum requirements are to exchange both uh, gym leader notes. So that's like um, two hundred um, vouchers right there. Then, of course, you you want to get all the replay tickets as possible, which is only one piece. So. 270 vouchers, that's your minimum uh, tick on the event and then the rest of it is just pretty much pointless unless you have a lot of time. So yeah, um, Pokemon Masters doesn't really take up a lot of time to play per day. Um, so far from my experience since the game's launch or rather the time that I've actually put in most focus of my day onto the game itself. Uh, since my very first video on my channel, I've basically spent maybe about five hours a day. Considering that, you know, the beginning part of the game, I've been grinding my trainers a lot for levels and getting myself uh, capable of playing very hard, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, um, you can actually spend less than five hours a day. Uh, and if you run on auto, that's even easier. I mean, but the problem is, under auto play, um, the AI kind of doesn't maximize your team. Like, um, if I'm using my main team, like you've seen, 
they will actually use superior skill to recover e energy pointlessly um, under auto run. So that's really uh, the sad thing about auto mechanics sometimes when the AI isn't as smart as you want them to be. <laughs> Alright, so um, let's talk about trainer events. Alright, so trainer events, let's see, Gary, Gary is the current one that is, the, or rather Blue is the only one that has a trainer event now. Um, he still has a pretty decent amount of time left, 18 more days, but the problem is, the item that you really want to obtain of minimum play is, of course, the first two items as always. Now, the, the power-up item is the most important one, because... You know, if you want to improve your team, let's say for example, um, level up, I guess. Uh, no, not level up. Let, let me... Uh, increase potential. So, in order to increase potential, you need the power up items which can only be gotten through such events so far. So, there's only three pieces. Now, the problem with these items is they do have expirations on them. So, 42 days. Um, actually, I've gotten it for quite a few days already. I think it was 45 when it started. I'm not too sure. So, yeah. So, you actually gain like duplicate copies of them. So, 20 is the max. Of course, by doing so, you improve your stats on your trainer. Um, so, yeah. So, of course, the rarer ones, I suppose. Power up. Uh, they're exactly the same thing actually so I have no idea what's the difference <laughs> okay so um, I guess maybe one of them actually gives more stats used to increase a sync pass number of stars yeah so the thing is um, Rosa is at max rarity which is a 5 star let's see if I use it on Barry there we go so um, the, the problem is we don't have this the bronze version um, which actually makes Barry from a 3 star to a 4 star. So, yeah. Um, I guess eventually when Dana releases the items, they will be of use to r rare up your trainers. So, but in the meantime, all the level 5 trainers, um, Olivia, Blue, uh, Rosa, and of course the brand new one, which is. Let's see, where's the scout? I can't really remember her name. Uh, Kotone? Yeah, that's her Japanese name. So, oh yeah, Lyra is her English name. So, Kotone is the Japanese name of Lyra. Okay, all these trainers that are focused on when uh, their individual scouts are all level 5, or rather, uh, rarity 5. So, yeah. Um, um, that's pretty much all I have to say about the events that's currently going on in Pokemon Masters. So hopefully all this information gives you the um, idea of the bare minimum that you need to play, you know, to at least get out all the important exchangeable items from the shop uh, for these events itself. Then of course, don't forget to play all the event missions because you know, I don't know, 10 golden rarity pearls are pretty awesome. Uh, if you guys don't know what that actually does, go to the exchange shop, then of course, general. If you scroll down, 10 rarity gold pearls is equivalent to 30,000 in game currency. <laughs> so, um, and if you don't know what in game currency you use for, oh my goodness, what have you been doing? <laughs> you can actually use in game currency to exchange for charts that you actually need to evolve your trainers Pokemon then of course you could buy your energy bar extensions which are, which are already done so that's why you can't see it here um, then of course you can use the money to buy all these time limited items which you can probably get um, from grinding a lot which is really not necessary um, but I guess the important one to actually pay attention to during this um, exchange periods which have limited days is definitely the replay ticket. So yeah, that's basically it. 
um, for Pokemon Masters at this point of time. You know, because Dana hasn't really started rolling out like ranking events, uh, which is a good thing. <laughs> because if they do launch out ranking events, uh, I don't know whether I can actually compete against people who have tossed money into this game so far. At this point of time, I'm still playing it uh, free to play and I have not really spent any money and of course ever since uh, Dana fixed a certain bug they gave out you know nine I think it was nine thousand gems uh, which was pretty fantastic <laughs> so yeah so I will be doing um, a scout video right after this for uh, Lyra uh, Kotone whichever one to call her by um, right after this video so yeah thank you guys for joining me in this brief, somewhat brief it's like 20 minutes long <laughs> but I had to I had to break things down detailedly for you guys um, you know because if you want to play Pokemon Masters of you know a certain standard you know make sure you know what you're doing um, and of course what is the minimum effort you need to be doing and of course yeah I don't really want you guys to lose out on anything important so at this point of time of 18th September 2019 you guys have still quite a bit of time to grind the three current e available events and of course exchange all the important items within their exchange yeah. hopefully you guys are doing well with your team setup for Pokemon Masters and of course make use of the events to help start grinding those trainers of those types and of course if you are grinding blues at the event you're gonna be boosting your um, grass I think it was grass, water and uh, fly if I'm not wrong <laughs> I, I really can't remember It's it should be grass, fire, uh, flying and Oh, no, 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 co-op. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, oh, sorry. Rock, water, and flying. So, basically, yeah, the recommended types. That's the best time to start improving your trainers uh, in terms of EXP and, of course, unlocking their skills and all that kind of stuff. So, anyway, guys, thank you guys for joining me in this episode of Pokemon Masters. Hopefully, this video gives a... Uh, more clearer view on what you need to do for events in Pokemon Masters and of course pay attention to all those expiration dates that the items have and of course event durations if you guys have not been playing mobile games before um, it's always good to you know um, seek help from people who have been playing games for a very long time just like myself I'm here for you guys I'm here for you to uh, learn about the game so that you don't really have to crack your brain too hard <laughs> to figure things out anyway guys thank you guys so much for watching again I always say thank you a lot throughout all my videos on my channel so yeah very very grateful alright let me know by hitting the like button to this video if you you know appreciate all the information as always share this video to all your friends playing Pokemon Masters and of course the most important of all subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon Masters content in the future and I'll see you guys in the next video of Pokemon Masters uh, pretty soon. Bye!